start with three minutes, start with one minute, like just start where you can. I think the biggest thing is we want to make sure that the practices are, we're able to integrate them into what we're doing anyways. If I, if I was to say, no, you only can do it twice a week for half an hour, people aren't going to do that right off the bat, especially with such a new practice. But what I found to be true in my journey with breath work is I had that one sort of like huge, like, holy crap, what is this? And then I began just, just slowly. And now I feel like my body craves it. Welcome back to the Essentially You podcast, all about reinventing your health with safer, cheaper, more effective natural solutions and powerful lifestyle changes so that you become the CEO of your health. I am your host, Dr. Marisa Snyder. For years, research has shown that stress is one of the biggest root causes of hormonal imbalance along with other chronic conditions. And chronic stress, we know, drives a cascade of hormonal pathways through the hypothalamic pituitary adrenal axis that can cause another set of cascade of stress hormones to be released into the body to have a profound impact, especially cortisol. Now, I cover this in great detail in episode 122, Why Adrenal Fatigue is a Myth, in case you want to really go deep on this topic. Now, cortisol is what I call an alpha hormone, and it has a profound impact on other hormones in the body, including insulin, estrogen, and thyroid. And when you think about those hormones, insulin, estrogen, and thyroid, they are running millions of reactions every second of the day inside of your body. So the impact is huge. So how can we set ourselves up for success and significantly reduce perceived stress in the body? Well, that first step, it's self-awareness and having the right tools at your fingertips. And that's why my guest, Samantha, and I are going to be exploring this in our conversation today. But first, I want to share one of the quickest and most effective ways to reduce stress at a moment's notice with aromatherapy. Now, you know I love using aromatherapy to reduce stress levels, and today I'm gonna share something really exciting with you. Now, I know I don't have to tell you this, but it's important to always have your oils on you at all times. And if you're brand new to essential oils and you want to learn more, I recommend you go and grab the copy of my best-selling book, The Essential Oil Hormone Solution. I will have the link in the show notes for episode 144, and it's 50% off on Amazon right now, which is pretty awesome. Now, what I know for sure is that you never really know when perceived stress is lurking around the corner. You could be triggered by traffic, by running late from a meeting, a text message, even a phone call can completely throw off your day and put you into survival mode, right? One moment you are all good, life is good, you're going about your day, you're doing your business, and then the next moment you get a text message and like, have you ever wondered, like, why did I even look at that text message when I was in the middle of something? Because it completely throws you off. I want you to think about it. Can you recall the last time you felt triggered and overwhelmed and it literally came out of nowhere? Like it Mack trucked you in the middle of the day. Well, it just happened to me yesterday. I was working. I was in a meeting. I don't know why I grabbed my phone. I don't know why I looked at it. I saw a text message from my mama and right then and there, I should have known not to look at it. And I did anyway. And it was a text message that basically told me that something had happened to my sister earlier that day and that I needed to call my sister immediately to make sure that she was okay. And I just, I felt frazzled, right? I didn't know exactly what happened. She didn't give me a lot of details. She just made it very urgent. It felt very scary. And all of a sudden I was super distracted in the middle of my meeting. I know that's happened to you too. And here's the deal. The average adult, especially women, because we are handling so much, we've got so much on our plate, we're, we're juggling all the, right, all the balls in the air all at once, that we can go into a state of perceived stress 50 plus times a day, and it's completely unconscious. Hopefully, you recognize those moments, because when you do, when you're feeling overwhelmed, you're feeling triggered, I want to be able to share with you a strategy, basically a powerful technique that has helped not only me, but also thousands of women that I've taught over the years. Now, you can find the full version of this technique in my book. It's all written out, so in case you're driving or you're in the middle of something and you're not able to do it now, you can always go to the book and check it out. But I'm going to share it with you and I'm going to teach it to you today. And maybe you want to do it with me. It's called The Power of the Pause. 
Now, this simple meditation is powerful and it'll shift you from a stress state to a relaxed state like that. I mean, we're talking about in a matter of 60 seconds. Now, I want you to first, if you want to do this with me, grab your favorite calming essential oil. Now, I don't know about you, but I always have my calming oils on me everywhere, literally in the car, in my purse, wherever I'm at, I always have the oils on me. And best believed, I grabbed these oils after I got that text message from my mama. Now, my favorite oils for reducing stress are gonna be bergamot, clary sage, cedarwood, jasmine, lavender, and frankincense. Mind you, you can make your own blends. I've got tons of blends on my Instagram account and everywhere so you can learn. And my favorite little duo, my favorite little power combo is bergamot and lavender. You can always add frankincense and Roman chamomile to that or a ling ling to that as well. So you've got your oils. For this technique, I want you to put a drop on your palms. Now, if you do not have oils, don't worry. You don't have to have them by any means. I do this technique often too when I don't or do have oil. So totally up to you, whatever works for you. But oils just literally take it up the next level. Like it it just increases the ability to kind of move through that stress response so fast. Now what I want you to do is once you've got the oils on your palms, rub your palms together, put your palms to your nose, and you're gonna take a full inhalation. Like breathe all the air that you can in. So, and you're gonna hold it for five seconds. And then you're gonna breathe all the air out. And I want you to imagine breathing out all the stressors, all the demands, everything all out. (sighs) After you exhale everything out, like you're exhaling a big balloon all the way down, you're gonna hold it for five seconds again. And then you're gonna breathe back in. Hold it for five seconds. And you're gonna breathe out. And hold it for five seconds. And you're gonna repeat this technique 10 times, maybe even more if you need it, until you feel like you're going from a stress state to that ease and grace state. And I'll tell you what, you will feel it when you get there. Your shoulders will drop, the tension will melt, you'll just know you're there. And what I love about this technique is that you do it you are immediately sending your limbic brain, right? That that part of the brain that controls all of this, a message to switch tracks from a stress state to a relaxed state. And after a few seconds, your body will literally switch the operating system from that fight or flight mode to the rest and digest mode. So sympathetic nervous system mode to parasympathetic mode. This meditation over time will help you switch tracks even before you do it. So like you can change the way that you respond and change the way that you react to stress by creating these new neural pathways, by re-shifting this operating system. And what this meditation does is it literally puts you in charge of your stress response system. How powerful is that? Having tools like this can really give you a significant opportunity to lower your stress level point, like your stress level set point, and help to rebalance your hormones. And not just your stress hormones, as I mentioned earlier, your metabolic and reproductive hormones are also playing a role as well. Now that you've got that, I wanna just take a moment and share your wins. One particular healing rock star is Nina Howes, and she reached out to me from Colorado on Instagram. Here is what Nina had to say earlier this week. Dr. Marisa, girl, your episodes on PCOS have changed my life. I was one of the 50% of the women who had no idea I had PCOS, but with your guidance and test recommendations, I went to my doctor and finally got the test I needed to figure out what was going on with me. I knew my periods were off. I just didn't know what was happening. I found out that my PCOS is being driven by my androgens and insulin issues, and now I'm on the path getting my body back on track thanks to you. You freaking rock. Well, thank you, Nina, for sharing your epic win. I am so happy to shout you out, and I cannot tell you, I know how good it feels to finally know what's going on in your body and to also feel like you've got some great resources to get you back on track. Now, if you are listening, I think my Essential Oil Hormone Solution book, Nina, would be wonderful for helping you on your journey. So feel free to PM me or DM me, reach out to me on Facebook or Instagram at Dr. Marisa, that's at D-R-M-A-R-I-Z-A, and I will get that book out to you as soon as possible. 
Now, if you are listening today, number one, welcome to this show. This podcast, if this is your first time coming around, is all about empowerment and if it has helped you in any way. If you've listened to episodes before and my gosh, you had that aha moment or you got that test or you knew what was going on or maybe you finally got that light bulb that said, that is what's going on with my body, I would love to shout you out. You can reach out to me via Instagram, Facebook, or I would love it. Love, love, love it. If you simply reviewed this podcast on iTunes or whatever podcast platform you plug into. Here's the deal. There are not enough podcasts about women's hormone health out there. There's not enough information on women's hormone health out there. And I really want to ensure that women are getting the resources that they need to create powerful changes in their body. And you are helping to do that. You are the change agent by just sharing these episodes on Instagram, Facebook, whatever feels good to you, however it's supporting you so that we can help more women become the CEO of their health. Now, let's dive into this incredible conversation today about the power of breath with Samantha Scully, but first I want to sing her praises. Samantha Scully is a seven-figure entrepreneur, sought-after international speaker, best-selling author, and wellness coaching expert. She founded both Hungry for Happiness, a movement that helps people experience true transformation and happiness through trained certified coaches who utilize emotional and energetic coaching techniques, and Pause Breathwork which has a mission to unite humanity by helping people breathe, feel, and thrive. Let's bring her on to the show. Welcome to the Essentially You podcast, Samantha Skelly. How are you doing today, girl? I'm so good. I'm so excited to have a chat with you. Me too. And we are chatting about breath work and how really the significance it can play in creating freedom in our life, not only from emotional imbalance or those moments of anxiety, but just really giving us that chance to pause and to create possibility. So before we get into that and providing this beautiful technique to my my listeners, I would love for you to just jump in and share a little bit about yourself, your story, your journey, and how did breathwork become such a big piece of your life? Totally. So I grew up as a child actress and a dancer. So basically my entire childhood was either on a stage or in front of a camera. And when I was 18 years old, sort of after I finished dancing and finished acting, all of my friends were going off to university and I was like, you know what? I was like, that doesn't feel like something I want to do right now. And so I sort of followed my bliss and traveled. But when I was traveling, I developed a really unhealthy relationship to food and to my body. It was this four-year span when I was on over 50 diets in less than four years and had no idea how to eat like a normal person. I was using food as a drug and then I was restricting and I had a really unhealthy relationship to my body. I used exercise as punishment rather than just movement. And it was a time in my life where the only two things that I really could feel in my body was anxiety or numbness. There wasn't a, there wasn't a diversity of emotionality in in my body. And I was struggling so bad with food and I knew I needed to make a change after four years, every single day, fighting food on and off the scale. I just, there, my soul was like, you can't live like this anymore. And so I was living in Vancouver at the time where I'm from and I was in and out of doctor's offices and so many people were treating my eating disorder with dieting or with further restriction or calorie counting or, you know, like measuring things. And it was, it was making it worse. And on a deep level, I knew that the issue was so much more than just food. It was an emotional issue. And the treatment that I was receiving, I felt was putting band-aids on bullet wounds and not actually getting to the core root of the issue. So I went to Bali and I thought to myself, I'm just going to see if I can, you know, do a traditional or like a holistic way of healing myself. So I went to Bali, I did meditation classes and I did, you know, energy therapy and energetic healing and all sorts of things. And I was on my way to a meditation class and I lost track of time and I got there about half an hour late. So I missed the class. So I looked on the bulletin board and I was like, okay, what else is available at this time? And I saw that there was a breathwork class and 
at that point in my life, I had no idea what breath work was. And maybe for a lot of people listening, they still have no idea what it is because it really is a newer way of healing the body, body and a newer way of working. So I went to the class and it was a three hour breath work class. And I walked in and the gentleman who was teaching, he looked a little bit like Jesus or something. He was wearing this like long robe. And he said to me, he was like, are you ready to go on the ride of your life? And I'm like, I don't know what that means, but let's just do it. And so we started to do this breath pattern and breath work sort of takes you into like another way of being. And I was able to experience so many sensations, so many emotions, so many feelings that I had hadn't felt in so long because I was numbing my body and, and just depriving myself of feeling for so long. And I got out of the class and I was just like, what was that? That was magical. So this was about seven years ago, eight years ago now. So I just researched everything I could about breath work. I went and did every certification on the planet. I just became such a student of this work and became obsessed with using it in my own personal life because it was helping so much with, it helped get rid of my eating disorder. It helped with stress management It helped with anxiety. It just helps with every day now is using it to enhance performance. So I had no idea that I was going to ever start a business of breath work, but that birthed itself about two years ago. And so we've been going strong ever since. Mm, I so appreciate you sharing your story and a lot of those insights that you discovered on your own. It's so interesting where we really have to dig into what's going on in our own bodies, like connecting into that inner pilot light to figure out what's really going to serve us versus what other people may be telling us, right? Like for instance, that, you know, you were being recommended diet plans. That's not exactly what you were needing. So talk to me about, I mean, clearly we can see that breath work and that we're opening up the door for the possibility of what breath work can do. Can we talk about why breath work is the number one self-healing modality a little bit more? Like where has that played out not only in your life, but also how, how have you seen that play out in so many other women's lives as well? Because I know that you and I both serve, I'm predominantly you both serve women. I have a feeling. <laughs> yeah. So what I realized was going on so often in the personal development industry is the sort of dependency model was being perpetuated. And a lot of people were giving away their power because they thought that other people had the answers and they didn't self-source and self-soothe. And when we utilize the power of breath work, the body is doing the work for us, not the mind. So we are able to access this deeper part of us, this, this more intelligent, profound, wise part of us, which is our bodies. And the body becomes the healer, not the mind. And so by self-healing, I mean, we can utilize the power of our breath to clear emotions that are stuck and stagnant, to release trauma that's been suppressed for years. And we can begin to really feel into like, what, what is my actual essence. Like when I take away all of this residual emotion and stress and tension and pain and overwhelm, how do I really feel at the core? And so often we feel like we need to search and hustle for that feeling when really it's just inside of us. Now I am a huge believer in coaching. Of course, I own two coaching companies. That's my whole industry. But when we can let people know that the power exists within themselves and the coach is there to hold the space and to guide and facilitate that's the relationship that's most powerful because everyone and, and their body is so incredibly powerful. And the best teacher that we all have is ourselves. Mm, I love how you break that down. And that makes so much sense. One of the areas that we were discussing before this is how breath work can help with addiction. And today we've got so much addiction happening, or we've got so many people dealing with cravings, whether it's social media addiction, whether it's a chemical addiction, whether it's a food addiction, sugar addiction, whatever that may be. And it feels like in those moments that we just have to have that, right? And it feels like it may be almost inescapable. How can we use breath work to help us navigate those moments? I always call it like winning the cupcake stare down or winning <laughs> <laughs> martini stare down or whatever it may be that you find yourself like you've got to have it at that moment because this is a, such a trying moment. You know, it's specifically for looking at cravings. I know a craving lasts about 90 seconds, but man, in that 90 seconds, you could do some serious damage. 
<laughs> you know, that 90 second lasts forever. Doesn't it? <laughs> yeah. You know, it's so interesting. So I'm going to relate this to food because that's my, where I'm most experienced in from a personal standpoint and then serving over 23,000 people to help them with food. We are using food as a drug. Like food has become the most socially acceptable and readily available drug there is. And what that's a function of is us having an inability to handle the emotions that come up in our body. So whether we call that emotion stress or overwhelm or fear or anxiety or whatever it is, we have a really broken relationship to feeling. Like even if we trace back to like our early days when we're like three, four years old and we fall down and we hurt ourselves, our mom's like, hurry, like get rid of it. And if you cry, maybe someone in your family has been like, don't cry. Don't be, you know, don't be so weak. Just, you know. And so we have these conditions around emoting and, and showing pain and, and especially emotional pain and especially for men. So when we feel these feelings, the instinct is to numb. The instinct is to let release it through, or, or not even release it, but suppress it rather through food. And that's just driving us into a deeper state of self-hatred truly and berating our body. And when we can learn to marinate in the discomfort of whatever that sensation is, and we can understand that pain is actually a catalyst for growth, and we need pain in order to grow, we set ourselves free. So when it comes to, let's say food, for instance, when we have that feeling of like, I have to have that, I have to have that, I have to have that. What we're really hungry for is a sensation. What we're really hungry for is, you know, comfort or peace or Zen or happiness or bliss or joy, whatever it is. And so the question that we get to ask ourselves when we are being pulled into wanting to sedate ourselves with food is, what am I actually hungry for? What is the feeling that I'm actually hungry for? What do I really want out of this moment? And when we do that, we really do set ourselves free. Mm. So it's as important, or would you say it is as important to ask ourselves those questions as we are before or after we're doing this breath work? So I think that those questions are so important and so key to figuring out what is really driving those, those addictions or what's really driving that craving at that moment. Absolutely. So I mean, when it comes to pain and an addiction, whether that's social media or drugs or alcohol or whatever it is, there's so much data there. There's so much data and there's so much insight there. So when we, when we can observe the feeling rather than identify with it, we can be more proactive about how we respond to it rather than being reactive and suppressing it. And oftentimes when we're not connected to our body, it's very difficult to hear those answers of I need space. I need time. I need stillness. I need slowness or whatever it is. But when we choose to feel into our pain and, and we get through it, we then come to a place of just clarity, like energetic clarity. Like our body has all the answers. It's not our mind. And so there's so much work that can be done when we just pay attention to our feelings and we really feel them so we can extract the lessons. Is that the same for those really uncomfortable feelings around anxiety or feeling overwhelmed or feeling stressed. I find that that stress and overwhelm, you know, can then turn into anxiety. So is it the same thing that if we, we attune into those emotions, if we can attune into that, that we can really figure out what's going on. We can really figure out how to heal, heal that anxiousness, heal that anxiety. How are those two connected? Can we use the same type of work for anxiety as we do for the addiction work? Absolutely. When we say I'm stressed, that's just a really socially acceptable way of saying I'm really scared, right? If we if we're to peel back the layers of why I'm so stressed, right? Whether it's say it's work stress, like oh, I'm so stressed at work. Okay. Well, why? Well, because I have all of these deadlines and this is happening and there's so much on my plate. Okay. Well, what what if you don't hit those deadlines? Well, then I'm not going to be accepted. Then I'm not going to be good enough. Right. And then it comes down and down and down. So it comes from fear, but it's not very socially acceptable to say, I'm scared. Right. I'm scared. I'm fearful. But that's what our inner child is saying. Like, I'm scared. I'm fearful. But we say I'm stressed because that's more of a socially acceptable thing to say. So the sensation of fear and the sensation of stress is the exact same. It's just simply the the label that we we put on it. And then when it comes to addiction, it's the exact, it's the exact same thing, right? What, a, what an addiction is, is we are so dependent on something external because we don't have the ability to resource it internally. 
or they haven't yet had the ability to resource it internally. So we are dependent on something outside of us to provide us that sensation or that frequency in our body. Whereas when we learn to actually feel this, we no longer are dependent on the addiction. Now, when it comes to anxiety, I think it's important to note here that anxiety just doesn't like poof, go away. Once we learn this, we just change our relationship to anxiety. So we don't get caught in it and it doesn't become chaotic and dramatic. It becomes a sensation that we experience and we can honor and shift very quickly. Like my story used to be constantly like, I am an anxious person. I am an anxious person. And I wore that identity so, so much. It was, it was such a label that I put on myself. And then I changed my story to, I experience anxiety And now when it comes up, because it still does for sure, I know exactly how to feel it, to shift it. And I know exactly what to ask myself in order to give myself the actual medicine that I need. Mm. Would you be open to kind of giving an example? Because I know that people who are struggling with anxiety, you really have a hard time kind of seeing past that, like not be an overly anxious person and just kind of recognize it that, hey, occasionally I feel anxiety, but now with these skill sets, with these questions, with this ability to breathe through it, I can move through this emotion or whatever that underlying emotion is much quicker. It doesn't have as much of an impact on my body physiologically. Yeah. So there's three parts of our body that is constantly communicating to us at one time. We have our mental and our mind, right? So all the noise in the mind, which is where all the anxiety comes from. And then we have our our emotional body. And then we have our intuitive body. So when when we're in a state of panic or energetic overwhelm or anxiety, it's because we're depending too much on the piece of the the mind, the mental, and then it's spinning it, it's kicking up emotion, and then the emotion is kicking up more thoughts, and we create this negative feedback loop. Well, we can cut through that negative feedback loop by using our breath. Do you want to do it right on the call so people can? We can Absolutely. Tool? Okay, yes. cool. So this is just a really, really simple breath strategy that you can use for, let's just do it for a, a minute and it'll have a huge impact. So this breath pattern is called the triactive breath. So it's a three-part breath and we're only using our mouth. So you want to breathe in twice and exhale once. So it sounds like this and then I'll explain it. <sighs> So you want to bring the energy in through the belly, up into the chest, and out through the mouth. And the breath is continual. Normally, our body breathes us when we're not paying attention. The body just knows exactly how to breathe us. With breath work, we're consciously breathing the body. So we're doing this in a very conscious, proactive way to circulate the energy and move out of some of those those charged states of anxiety. So... Should we do it together? Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. Ready? Mm -hmm. Go. Let's all take a deep breath in and hold our breath. That was incredible. I will say that that does take a little bit of practice. I think all breath work does though. Totally. So I actually hated breath work for the first three months that I did it. I had that first experience where I was like, oh my God, this is amazing. And then I'm like, man, this is effort. This takes work. This takes practice. And it is practice. And the more that we do it, the more that we can begin to regulate our nervous system. And the more that we see the benefits of it, it just becomes so much easier. Our bodies are not used to breathing deeply. 
So did you feel a little bit of like tension or contraction? Like it, it may have felt like a little bit difficult. Oh yeah. It felt exhausting after a while. <laughs> yeah. I was like, oh my gosh, I don't know. I don't know why I felt a little bit lightheaded after a while. Kind of because I was trying to suck so much air in or I was trying to release air. I don't know exactly what, but I was getting a little lightheaded and I was like, oh my gosh, this definitely takes work and definitely takes practice. I have other breath work that I do that isn't, I mean, because I've done it for so long, it doesn't feel as hard. I can imagine there being resistance. I mean, I think there's a, I mean, like so many things that we do that are good for us, right? There's a lot of resistance to that, especially like even meditation. And, you know, a lot of people really struggle with meditation because it requires practice. Same thing with breath work, I'm guessing. Do you meditate? Is meditation ever separate than breath work? Do you do them at different times? I don't know if you meditate at all. I was just curious. I used to hate meditation because my brain is so busy all the time. Well, you're running two companies. Yeah. <laughs> it's going to be super busy. Things going on. <laughs> So I would sit there and just think about the most random stuff. Like what was Susie's dog's name from high school? Like, you know, just like crap. It doesn't matter. My mind was so active and busy. And then I discovered breath work and breath work before meditation is the best. Like if you go from a chaotic state of just responding to life and like, go, 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 like most of the world is. You do even honestly like five minutes of breath work before you meditate. It brings your meditation practice to a much deeper level because you're already, you've already bypassed the mind. The hardest part of meditation is bypassing the mind to get into the intuitive body. But when we can do that through breath work, the rest becomes really easy. Mm, I love it. I just love, I love the honesty and the transparency because I know people are going to try this and they're going to be like, ah, this is, what is this? And, I'm, and, and I love that you spoke to the resistance of that and the resistance of meditation. You know, I know there are so many women listening who are doing big things in the world and who have a lot of things on their plate and they're thinking to themselves, I just cannot make room for this. Yet they're experiencing anxiety. They've got these crazy cravings. They're dealing with stress, which as you said, that underlying, that underlying emotion is fear, right? That core emotion is fear and are looking for something to be able to up like to utilize. Now, when you began, when you first started in those first three weeks, um, and I don't know if it's changed since then as well, how long were you doing breath work on a, like every day? Like, was it a minute? Was it three minutes? Just kind of getting a sense of things because this feels like a great self-care ritual. Totally. I did 10 minutes in the morning. I'm a very active sleeper by that I mean my I, I constantly dream so much when I sleep so when I wake up it's almost like I'm holding the energy of my dreams and my body already feels like Ugh. like, like oh tension I'm already anxious yeah. yeah 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 like tense like I don't know I'm like I it just feels like like I'm you already, already should have accomplished a bunch while you were sleeping hundred <laughs> percent yeah like I feel emotionally constipated or something so doing that for 10 minutes in the morning is epic so I do that every morning for 10 minutes exactly what we just did but for 10 minutes and then in the evening as well so again when you're going to bed your to-do list can sometimes flash through your mind you're like all the things I didn't do or whatever breath work just brings us back into a place of peace so we can really sleep and my sleep quality has gone through the roof since I started sort of sandwiching my you know my day with or my night rather with with breath work then I'll do a half an hour one about twice a week just to stay in the practice of doing it Wow. Okay. So that kind of gives us a sense. If someone was just getting started and 10 minutes feels like, whoa, is there a place that we can start that we can still experience a lot of the benefit? And you could say no. You could be like, listen, 10 minutes is a non negotiable <laughs> a place where we can start. Maybe it is three minutes, you know, because I know that there are people still struggling with the idea that they don't even have three minutes, which you need to rewire how you think about how you're operating during the day. But even three minutes can feel like a lot for people. Totally. So honestly, start with three minutes, start with one minute, like just start where you can. I think the biggest thing is we want to make sure that the practices are, we're able to integrate them into what we're doing anyways. If I, if I was to say, no, you only can do it twice a week for half an hour. People aren't going to do that right off the bat, especially with such a new practice. But what I found to be true in my journey with breath work is I had that one sort of like huge, like, holy crap, what is this? And then I began just, just slowly. And now I feel like my body craves it. 
I'm like, I don't want to be in this chaotic state. I want to do this. So it takes a little bit of effort to do it, but try two minutes twice a day. Try two minutes in the morning and two minutes in the evening, the exact breath pattern that that I shared. And if you want longer ones, I have a ton of free content and audios to, to share with you if you want longer ones. But just to start with, do two in the morning, two in the evening, and just see how you go. I love that. Well, and I think what I love, a couple of things that I love so much about it. One that, yes, it can be a smaller amount of time as you begin to ramp up. Because let's be honest, anytime we start a new healthy habit that we're integrating, we want the benefits. We're like, we want to be like, oh, I'm feeling how this is benefiting me. And I think some of the biggest kind of benefits that we're going to feel out the gate, one, is feeling more in tune to our body, which is so, so important. Reducing stress, really reducing fear and reducing potential any worry or anxiety anxiousness that you may having, you may be having, and maybe even those racing thoughts that happen. Like you talk about, you're waking up in the morning, your body is like, we got to do the things, we got to go and do the things. And if you're able to breathe that out, all of a sudden it's, you know, the sky is not falling. Your body isn't in, in action mode. <laughs> and I think we could feel those benefits. When we start to feel those benefits, then it's like, oh, like you said, like now, like I crave it. I got to have it today. Yeah. I got to have my morning ritual. I got to have my evening ritual. I have to have my breath work built in because that is, that is how this body operates now. Totally. Yeah. It just becomes a part of my life. You know, using food as a drug was a part of my life when I chose it. <laughs> and now this is, and honestly, it's when we talk about what are the core feelings that we want to feel? I want to feel peaceful. I want to feel alive. I want to feel excited. I want to feel energized. Well, I know my strategy to make that happen. That's quick and effective. And I don't need anyone else or anything else to make that happen is my body is my breath. So what a freaking gift that is. Mm, I love it so much. Now you just mentioned you got some, you got some goodies or some, some resources that we can plug into. I don't have those in my notes, but I know you yeah. can help guide us there totally, and totally. then I can have it in the show notes. <laughs> totally. Yeah. So I have an audio that helps with anxiety and just clearing emotion, or if you're just interested in breath work at all, you can head over to pausebreathwork.com slash free audio and just download that, check it out, uh, listen or read the, the FAQ before you do that. So, you know, some of the, the physical, you know, things that can happen and you might cry and shake and things like that. It's just moving energy in the body. So read that FAQ and then I'd love to hear your experience. So I'm really active on Instagram. So hop on over there and, and let me know how it goes. Absolutely. Well, with that said, where is the best place that we can connect in with you? I know you've got a podcast. I know you're on Instagram, girl. So tell us where where do we want to plug into you besides the, the awesome little free gift, the little bonus that we're going to get here? How else can we learn more? I'm very active on Instagram. It's my platform of choice at the moment. So definitely Instagram is a great place to start. And then hungryforhappiness.com and pausebreathwork.com. Hungry for happiness for all food you know, food disorders, emotional eating, binge eating, disordered eating, and then pause breath work for any of the breath work stuff. So those two sites and then Instagram. Love it. Perfect. Yeah. Well, Samantha, honey, it was such an incredible pleasure to have you and to talk about this and to get into the nitty gritty of this, not only the benefits, but really how we can begin to integrate. Cause I know so many people understand the benefits for so much of this, but it can just be so challenging to get started. And I know you feel that because you, you told us about your own resistance. And I think that that just speaks to these, these types of wonderful healing mechanisms, healing, healing work that we can do for our bodies requires a little bit of practice and that is okay because then we relish in it and we just love it so much. So I'm so grateful that you spoke to that as well. Thank you, my love. It's such an honor being here. Thank you so much for having me on. Absolutely. Thank you. So did you have the opportunity to practice the breath work exercise with us? How was that exercise for you? Was it as hard as it was for me after about eight to 10 breaths? Samantha really opened my eyes to the many benefits that breath can have, not only for anxiety and addiction, but also just overall healing the body. And I was blown away by how she was able to practice her breath work every single day. I absolutely know without a shadow of a doubt that it's making a huge difference in our bodies when we're able to take that time to really breathe out and reset the system. 
Now, if you tried it out and loved it, or even tried it out and had a hard time, but you're interested in learning a little bit more about how you can breathe, either if it's the power of the pause or Samantha's great techniques, I want you to go and check out the beautiful gift that Samantha is giving us today. It's gonna be in my show notes for episode 144. I really hope you check it out. It's definitely worth investigating, right? Because there's a part of you, there's that knowing that says, ah, I need to be breathing more. Goodness knows. I need to be breathing more. I do a breathing exercise every morning. I mean, I'm thinking about incorporating more throughout the day because again, those little mini moments of reset make all the difference in the world. So go and check that out. Again, the show notes for episode 144. And I just want to say thank you so much for stopping by and listening into the Essentially You podcast. Our next episode, I am a little giddy about it. We are bringing on an expert to talk about mitochondria health and how to really how to create more cellular energy and overcome exhaustion by helping to support those mitochondria. I know I talk about mitochondria a little bit here and there. I'm so excited that we're devoting a full episode to how to get those mitochondria working for you. I can't wait to see you at the next episode. Until then, have an amazing day. 